Hey everybody, in this video I'm gonna show you how to bake bread. And you might be thinking, oh it's difficult, I cannot do it. But in reality it's very simple, very easy, this recipe is very forgiving. And by the end of it, you may be inspired to bake your first loaf. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Alright, so to get started you need a bowl in which you're gonna combine 180 grams of milk with 7 grams of yeast. And all the measurements are in the description. The milk needs to be warm but not hot. If it is hot, it's gonna kill the yeast. Then set that aside for about 10 minutes. Then get 625 grams of flour, combine that with 35 grams of sugar and 10 grams of salt. Whisk that to combine so everything is homogenized. Then get 45 grams of butter melted. I just put it on the microwave for 30 seconds. And because I didn't have a bigger bowl, I'm using a tray, but you can totally use a bigger bowl if you have one. Or just anything that you can mix all of the ingredients together. So add your flour, add your yeast mixture that has been bloomed, add the rest of the milk that's plus 180 grams, so 360 grams in total, add the melted butter, and in the bowl that you bloomed the yeast, you can crack two eggs and whisk them to combine. Then just add it to the rest of the flour mixture. So now we almost have our dough, we just need to mix all of those ingredients together until a shaggy dough starts forming, and then we can add that to a floured surface. Dust it liberally with flour and start kneading that for about 5 minutes. And kneading isn't complicated, you just need to stretch the dough, pull it back, you can do it in many different ways, you just want to get the dough moving. And during this process, if you get a little tired, that's fine, just leave the dough resting there, cover it with a bowl or a towel so it doesn't dry out, and when you're ready, go back at it. You know when your dough is done kneading, when you poke it and it springs back gently, so when you reach that state, you just want to form it into a ball. You can do that by rotating your hands underneath the dough, kind of pulling it and rotating it until you have a round ball. And then you're gonna oil a bowl with some neutral flavoring oil, maybe canola or some flour, whatever you have there. And then you're just gonna transfer the dough to this bowl. Then give it a little shake so the sides are oiled as well. Oil the top, then you can cover this with plastic wrap. I didn't have any so I'm just using some foil, oiling the part of the foil that's gonna go in contact with the dough so it doesn't stick when we remove it. And then we wanna cover this and let it rise for about 2-3 to three hours depending on how hot or cold it is. Mine took about 2 hours and 45 minutes, which after that I just removed the foil and then my dough was beautifully risen, it had more than double the size, it was perfect. So we wanna remove this from the bowl now, you can knock out the air by punching it or just pressing your hand in the dough. Then you're gonna flour surface, transfer your dough to this floured surface. And at this point the dough is very soft, very easy to handle, it doesn't stick to our hands anymore. And you just wanna knead this for about 3 minutes. You notice now that the dough is much softer, the feeling of handling it is a lot nicer. If you need it, of course you can add a little bit more flour. Just don't go crazy on it because we don't wanna dry the dough. And then we are going to do the same process, form it, shape it into a ball, oil the top of the dough and the bowl, give it a little shake, and let it rise for about 30 minutes. Then you want to take two loaf pans, butter them generously, the sides, the bottoms, even the tops, because after baking it's going to be a lot easier to remove them. So after 30 minutes have passed, take your dough, flour your surface, and now we are going to divide this dough into two pieces because we are baking two loaves. But if you want to do them smaller, you can totally cut them into 3 pieces, 4 pieces if you have smaller loaf pans, that's totally fine. So after you have divided your dough, you're going to kind of shape them into a log, tucking the ends underneath the dough, and then transfer them to your loaf pans. And give it a little shake so it doesn't stick. Do that for all your loaves, and then you want to press it gently so it goes to the corners of your loaf pan. And then we want to let this rise for a final time for about 1 hour, 45 minutes, just until the dough is a little higher than the size of our loaf pans. And then before baking, you can melt some butter and brush it generously on top of the loaves. This will get some really nice color and some nice flavor on top of the bread. Then bake them at 200 degrees Celsius or 390 Fahrenheit for about 30 to 40 minutes. If you have a thermometer, the internal temperature should be 94 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we want to let them cool immediately on a wire rack. I don't have a wire rack, so I'm just using my clean stovetop grates. And you want to do this so the bottom doesn't get soggy. You want to let them cool down just until they are barely warm. This will ensure that your bread is moist and not dry at all. Because if you cut your loaf right after you bake it, all that steam that's trapped inside is going to escape and it's going to be dry. And we don't want that. So after a bread has rested, it's finally time to cut it open and see how it is inside. We are really looking forward to it being soft and fluffy and kind of spongy. So after cutting it open, that's exactly what we have. 
And because of the sugar that we used, this bread goes really well with jam or any sweet application. But it's also great for sandwiches. It's really super flavorful. And my favorite way of testing this freshly baked loaf of bread is by spreading some clotted cream and just tearing it apart to see how fluffy it is. And that's basically it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment telling me what you think. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the next videos. And I see you on the next one. Bye!